You want to die? もう生きていたくない悲しいことは嫌だ。No. Saying that and nothing more, Machiru's eyes fall shut. She goes limp on the bed, apparently unconscious. I see. Well, in that case, that's how it'll be. I have to respect your wishes, after all. I gently wipe the sweat from the girl's forehead with my hand. I'll kill you, Machiru. First things first, if we're gonna end the real world, we're gonna need to find a suitable box. ここ何の変化も起こらない。私もう終わったんだ。そう決めてからは闇が怖くなくなった。何も感じないこの空間と私は友達だ。だから怖くない。ここにいればあらゆる恐怖から守られている。闇は私に膝枕をする。私の肩を抱く。私に密着し、そこから妖怪し、どこからが私で、そうでないのかが曖昧になっていく。これでいいんだ。これでいいの。Somebody's trying to open the door, but I've already decided I'm never coming out again. It's pointless. They should just give up. I'm finished. Count to your wings here out. I'm on. I can hear a voice. A voice that brings back a lot of memories. A voice I'll never hear again. I won't run away. Slightest. In living, I'll put my life on the line, you, so your real feelings. How is his voice reaching me here so deep in the dark? I'm sure I locked the door firmly behind me, but somehow it's slipping in through the cracks, trying to reach my heart. I wish he'd cut it out. I already decided to end the pain. I already decided I don't want to be sad anymore. Machiro, I'll make it happen. He's calling my name, but going back there would be far too scary. I don't want to live anymore, but being alone is scary too. What? Come on out with it. Say it. I'm afraid of being alone. So instead, I don't want to lose anything ever again. If I'm just going to end up losing the people I care about, then. But even more than that, I don't want to be separated from Yuji. I can see his face above me, very, very close. I'll never see him like this again. I'll never be able to touch him again. But there's nothing I can do about that now. As my consciousness fades slowly away, I hear him speak to me. I'll kill you, Machiro. I see. Being killed by the person I love, huh? Yeah. That might just be the happiest possible ending. Once again, I sink deep down through the dar darkness. And as I settle into my home at the bottom of the sea, I hazily wonder what will happen next. I'm pretty much dead already. What's going to change if Yuji kills me? 
Will even a small flicker of consciousness disappear into nothing? Or maybe I'll just fall a little deeper into an even darker and more silent world. I can't even imagine what an afterlife might be like. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared. And lonely, of course. But what else can I do? That girl's better than me. She always will be. So this is just the way it has to be. So bright. Something's happening, but I can't tell what. Once again, I'm forcibly dragged up out of the darkness. A brilliant light pierces deep into my eyes, bringing with it a sharp jolt of pain. Did you two kill me? That might explain this sudden dramatic change. Maybe this is the afterlife. I don't know about that, though. My eyes really hurt. Isn't everything all peaceful after you die? Or maybe he's still... It feels like my body's being carried along inside something. I can feel the vibrations of wheels turning over the floor below. It's not a car, nothing with an engine. This is something much more primitive. That's right, it's just like the times they carted me through the hospital hallways. But somehow this feels a lot stuffier. I wonder why this card is so different. Okay, what is this? What's going on? I decided never to come back from this world, but for some reason I'm still alive. And right now I'm lying inside a box. This is probably a little hard to believe, but... I can hear Yuji's voice. I'm definitely alive. This isn't the afterlife. But she was dead. I told you guys she was suffering from anemia, but that was a lie. Her hospitalization was for a much more serious disease. The exam results really did look favorable, but last night her condition took an abrupt turn for the worse. It's a real shame, but there was nothing they could do. I died? I mean, yeah, that was the plan. I was gonna die and let the other me take over, but something's wrong here. I'm lying inside a box, being treated like someone who's really dead. My eyes won't open more than a crack, but I can see the ceiling above me. I can see a blindingly bright light. It's the truth. Normally, this wouldn't have been disclosed to you guys either, but I want to give you the chance to get some closure. Amani's voice is thick with tears. The news of my death seems to have shocked her greatly. Kazami-san. Yes, Sachi? Hmm. Well, I think you all have some idea what I'm talking about. Every one of us here is for very private reasons, involving messy, complicated circumstances. Given that, it shouldn't be that surprising for a death to be handled as quietly as possible. Sati's voice is trembling too. Why is this happening? Why is Yuji doing this? Everyone's getting upset. This isn't what I wanted to happen. I vanish. The other me takes over, and everyone lives happily ever after. That's what I imagined. Amani, grab hold of Makina so she doesn't thrash around, alright? <laughs> even when I consciously try to move, I can't budge. Forget twitching a finger, I can't even blink. I wonder what's happened to my body. I didn't want to make anyone cry. 
I didn't want to hurt anyone, but now Makina's bawling. Yumiko doesn't sound like she's been crying. That's good. It'd be too much to take if they all started weeping over me. I can't see my classmates' faces. I'm walled off from their world all by myself inside this box. I can only guess from their voices what's occurring around me. I'd always thought I was alone, but I guess I didn't know what real solitude was until now. I can't speak, I can't see their faces, I can't move a muscle. Maybe I wasn't that cut off from the world after all. My voice was weak and my jokes were crappy, but at least I had friends who'd laugh with me, right? I'm going to take Machiru's body for cremation immediately after this. Anyone who has something to say to her, write a letter and put it inside. I'm sure she'll read them in heaven. Seems like Yuji really does plan to kill me. In that case, before the end, I want to talk to him again. I want to see everyone's faces one more time before I go. But I can't make that request now. I can't even tilt my head slightly, no matter how hard I try. My body just won't listen. It's like every muscle and every my body has gone on strike at once. I can't do anything but lie still on my back. I don't know if it's related, but my thoughts are moving very sluggishly as well. It's as though someone spun a network of thick spider webs inside my mind. Every thought has to slowly push its way through those clinging strands. Hmm. Aren't you gonna write anything, Sakiki? Why? You don't have anything to tell her. I see. Still, that doesn't change the fact that this is your last chance. Don't leave yourself any regrets. Well, that's your decision to make. I won't say anymore. <laughs> Makina's thin arm reaches inside the box, placing her letter next to my face. But before pulling away, she firmly strokes my cheek for a moment. I never expected such a tender gesture from Makina, who has always been like a rambunctious little sister. It kind of startles me. <laughs> next, Amani reaches in to leave me her letter. Seeing that enormous chest stretching against the edge of the box, the thought, wish my breast had been a little more like hers, pops into my mind. What a stupid thing to be thinking about at a time like this. But that's just how out of it I am right now. This is all too much to process. Amani doesn't touch my body, but she stares into my face for a long, long time. I don't think we've ever looked at each other like this before. Didn't know she could make an expression like that. It's surprisingly cute. <laughs> うまく書けなかったです。道ちる様との最後と言われても全然そんな気がしないんです。気持ちはわかるけど。だから少し短いですが。Sachi so pushes her letter, then draws back without ceremony, as if to say, "We'll meet again anyway." Are you sure you're right with this, Akaki? Understood. All right then. This is goodbye. And with that, I died. Involved in shuddering darkness, I'm carted off somewhere, probably a crematorium, if Yuji was telling the truth. Guess I'm going to be a pile of ashes in a little while. It's kind of a shame. I won't get to read the letters everyone went out of their way to write for me. And I really did want to see their faces before the end. I wanted to see Yuji's face. When I was the one saying goodbye, I was able to prepare myself emotionally. But now the shoe's on the other foot, and I'm kind of at a loss. Yumiko seems to have grabbed hold of the box and begun to shake it fiercely. I can hear her nails scratching against the wooden lid. Don't interfere, Sakaki. Get off. Sakaki-san, 
I appreciate it. I've never heard Yumiko this upset before, but it's even more surprising to learn that she has fears so similar to my own. The rumbling of wheels takes on a different tenor. We've left the building. Let me tell you something, Shiro. Death isn't the end. First of all, the people you've left behind have to try and say goodbye. The idea that you can just vanish into thin air is a lot of self-centered crap. I understand that you want to disappear, but before you die, I expect you to go through a proper procedure. You can't wrap your life up neatly all by yourself. That's naive, irresponsible thinking. I guess Yudi's aware that I'm conscious, but no matter how hard I try to move my mouth, I can't answer him. It seems to be growing gradually more difficult to breathe. Am I going to suffocate inside this box before I get burned to death? A thought floats idly through my head like a soap bubble. I wonder if Yuji has a license. A moment later, it pops and vanishes. Since I found myself in this box, I've been thinking about a whole lot of really pointless things. Things I wouldn't have even had thought about before fill my head to the brim. This must be what it's like to be paralyzed. My body's asleep, but my mind's awake. I'm immobile as a bound hand and foot, although there's no rope wrapped around me. I'll bury you in your favorite place. My body jerks up inside the cramped coffin, helpless to resist the shocks of transport. Maybe this is what it feels like to be a chocolate sitting in a box of candy. You're always, ta you're always talking about it, aren't you? Now it'll be your official place of death. All that about the cremation was a lie. That's, this was the plan from the start. Also, you can't move because I gave you a heavy dose of muscle relaxant. Not to worry, it'll wear off fairly soon. And then you'll find yourself all alone inside a deep, dark hole, with a heavy mound of soil above you. You probably won't be able to escape even if you try. This is world shed for. Have yourself a nice in there. Ye me. <laughs> 